Hi ladies of She Is Hope LA, Gwendolyn Osborne here. Um, just saying hello and wanting to offer any words of advice or wisdom that I have from my journey here in life. And um, you may know me from Price is Right, um, or I am actually the longest running woman of color on a daytime game show. So 12 years of Price is Right. And um, I was also in Wonder Woman as an Amazon. Um, I've most recently done a few things, projects that haven't come out yet. So yay to 2023 and all of the things that are coming. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk to you guys about finding your inner, inner Wonder Woman. So finding your inner Wonder Woman and being a superwoman, putting on your cape, taking off your cape and what those things actually mean. I want to tell you about my journey first so you can kind of understand how I got to this place to be able to talk to you about it. Um, I have three children, uh, ages 10, 14, and 27. So really two children and an adult child. And, um, you know, the sacrifice and compromise that comes with being a mother is so real. Um, I've never wanted to give up on my own dreams and goals. And I also don't think that uh, you should raise your children without having your own dreams and goals, because I think we do lead by example to an extent. And I understand that that is a harder choice than to just be a fully committed mother. But a lot of us as mothers do not have a choice to just be a fully committed mother. And we do have to try to figure out how to balance the two. Uh, so I have always had to do that. I started off as a single mom. I was a teen mom and uh, started off with modeling and I landed on the prices right with that. I got married. I had two more children and then I got divorced and I kind of found the same moment of feeling muted in life, in my personal and my business life. And I didn't want to continue that life anymore. I wanted to start anew and make changes. I realized I had my own accountability for allowing that to happen. I was safe. I was feeling like I didn't need to address issues. It was easier to not, but I was losing out on, on the full Gwendolyn. So I made the bold choice in one year to leave and retire from The Price is Right. And, uh, and I filed for divorce all in the same year. So that, so that year I was very much under a place of uncertainty. But I realized that whatever was meant to be for me was going to happen. And I had to allow the space with courage, <laughs> uh, with faith to know that whatever I was supposed to be in, wherever I was supposed to go in life would happen because I've created the space for it too. And that year I was tapped on the shoulder by the director of Wonder Woman, her name's Patty Jenkins, and she asked me to be in her next Wonder Woman movie. And that was Wonder Woman 1984, um, came out in 2020, blockbuster hit. It was during the pandemic, so there was no red carpet, unfortunately, but it has been a very fun journey. And I want to tell you a little bit about that. I was 40 <laughs> and I was having to go back to England, which is where I'm from. Um, oh, I haven't told you that I'm half Jamaican, I'm half English, and I've been in America for 27 years. So my accent is now called Jamaiglish. <laughs> and uh, I had to go back to England in order to film the movie. And I'm cast amongst a bunch of 20 something year old women. And, you know, we had to be fearless. The audition, you know, I had to run up a wall in a harness and flip over. And I've never done anything like that in my life, but I had to show up and say yes and be fearless because I wanted to live my dreams. This was an opportunity that was coming my way and I could not make up any excuses to not let it happen. I had to say yes. So in England, uh, it was six weeks of training. It was six hours a day 
uh, four hours of stunt training and two hours of personal training. We were learning how to eat properly, nutrition um, was completely clean and redone. We were, it was just rigorous training with stunt women, stunt men. Oh, it was a lot. And I am scared of heights. <laughs> and nobody asked me if I was scared of heights, but I don't know if you've seen the movie, but there are three story foot high poles that we had to be harnessed and jump on. And uh, I had to get over it. I had to come up with my own frame of mind uh, to push through because there was no way I was not going to do this. I was not being sent home because of my own fears or excuses. I'm gonna tell you, I came up with, while I was up there on these three story high poles, a scenario about my children. Because when I'm up that high, I don't like to look down because that's just like the worst thing you can do. I look out and I look forward and all I could see were trees, the tops of the trees and, you know, hints of tops of buildings. And so the scenario was that my kids were calling me and they were over there and they needed me. And I had to make sure that I got to them and I couldn't fall and I couldn't be scared and I couldn't think about it, but that was it. And so every time they would say, go, in my mind, it was go get your kids, go save them, go get them, they need you. And that's what helped me to get over it. So if that can help you create a scenario for your own life from here on out, <laughs> please use that um, or something similar, you know, maybe it's to get away from spiders because that's my next fear. <laughs> I hate spiders. I also had to spend so much time away from my children at that point that I had never done before. It was something I had to learn every day to feel okay about. Leaving your children is one of the hardest things to do, but just like anything else, practice is what helps you get better. And I'm never gonna say practice makes perfect because nothing's perfect and perfect's boring. So I had to figure out how to quiet my mind from the guilt, from the ruminations of stories that I was creating about what terrible things were happening because I was not with them. And the way I did that was through meditation. And at the time, I I was just listening to the apps, um, the Daily Calm. I love the, the Calm um, app. And there's, there's, mul there's a multitude of apps that you can find and they all are brilliant. And I would just meditate and it would give me a space of calm that after repetition caused me to be aware of myself and my body and be calm and notice when I was ruminating, when I was making these stories that were making me feel bad, that I was creating, and then notice my breath Notice if I'm holding my stomach tight or notice if I'm holding my throat tight, like not speaking completely from my heart. So being able to notice these things with meditation and time, I was starting to build my inner Wonder Woman. I was starting to take care of my mind and my body and my spirit, and I didn't even realize that that was going on. And we're gonna get more into that. So after these four months of training and competing and being around all these spectacular women from around the world, um, I realized that I was the maternal one amongst everybody and I was the connector. And I always love to bring out the best in people or, or show them or make them realize, you know, hey, you're you're fantastic at that and you're, you're great at that. And sometimes people don't even know, you know, they just are doing and they've never been told. So I like to tell them and that then created an environment of support and love and, and 
even though we were competing in the actual filming of the movie, there was no competition behind the scenes. It was, it was Wonder Woman supporting each other to continue on and give their best. And it was, that was not a movie or a scene. And that I take with me forever and I will always have a bond with those women for that reason. So after I was, you know, going through all of this training and finally we get to go on set in our, our armored outfits, I guess you could say. Now we're actually leather in the hottest summer of England since 1977, may I add. <laughs> um, I stepped onto the set and saw everybody else in their outfits. And, and as you can imagine, at, to this point, we've only ever been in workout gear together. But I looked around at them all and I realized I wasn't just admiring. I was, I was reflecting that I was one of them. I was one of them. I deserved to be here. I deserved to get the, the, the benefits of being an Amazon in life <laughs> and in this movie because they all looked fantastic to me. They all were actual fantastic human beings. And I realized that in that moment that I was one of them. And this is how we should feel in real life with each other. And I truly feel that you can only feel that if you take care of your inner Wonder Woman. So the motto for finding your inner Wonder Woman is face your truth. Take care of your mind, body, and spirit, and move forward with intention. So if you are starting to feel exhausted or depleted, and you know, you're not wearing enough hats, <laughs> that means that it's time for you to go take care of those things. And we're going to get into the details of what those are. Now, the superhero part being a superwoman and putting that cape on is all of the things exterior and outside and, you know, to do with giving to others. And you're never going to be able to put that cape on and it stay on. Like, let's say the Wonder Woman part is where the Velcro part is on your shoulders. And if you don't make sure that that Velcro is there, the cape is going to fall off. So we really have to make sure that we take care of our inner Wonder Woman so our full superhero can be in effect at all times. Let me just give you some, we'll break it down a bit. So we'll start with facing your truth. Now, what does facing your truth actually mean? It's about having transparency with yourself. What are your strengths and weaknesses within your business relationships, your personal relationships? Your other relationships around you with your children and your friends, what are the strengths and weaknesses of that? And what traits of those would you like to keep moving forward? What would you change? So that's to do with facing your truth. Mindfulness. Here we go. This is to do with taking care of the truth and where you're at. Have you been conscious? Have you been aware of how you are with yourself and with others. Um, maybe you're not ready to face certain things and that's okay. Be non-judgmental for that, but be honest with yourself about what you are ready and willing to take care of or not emotionally. What are you holding on to that you could let go of? Maybe you feel like you're like, I've always been this way about how my kitchen should look. Well, maybe you don't need to anymore. <laughs> you know, maybe it's okay for you to today have a different point of view about it. We can always change at any point at any time. So remember that. Are you open to accepting help? It's so hard for us Wonder Woman to accept the help. But once again, going back to what I said, if you surround yourself with other Wonder Women, then you are trusting of them. You are respecting of their advice. And if they come to you and say, hey, I can help you, you're going to accept it. So more of that. 
taking care of your mental space, your brain space, your breathing. Are you doing that? Are you being aware of it? Meditation or prayer in your life and however that looks to you. What is your belief system, your culture, your traditions? What of those do you want to keep? What do you want to let go of? What do you want involved in your life? What do you want going into your future? Yeah, what justifications and excuses are you making for yourself? Hmm? Because we do it all the time, very easily. We believe them. <laughs> so let's really be honest about what those are. What are your stakes? When you create long-term or short-term goals, what are your stakes? What does it mean if you do not accomplish what you try to commit to do? So that's all to do with the mindfulness and we're gonna go into the heart. How is your emotional well-being, and are you kind to yourself? Do you think that you are being judgy to yourself, which might be causing you to be judgy to others? Um, and what are you doing about trying to stay in touch with how your heart feels? And my foot is going to sleep, so I'm going to move. Um, yeah, like, let go of the judgment, you know, let go of it. Be kind to yourself. And I'm telling you, it's going to go further. It's going to seep into your other relationships and people are going to start telling you how appreciative they are of how kind you are to them without being judgmental. Do you want to stay to pay attention to how you feel about your decisions throughout the day? A lot of times I feel like as mothers, we have to make decisions all day long, quickly, all the time with three other people talking to us. You always have the opportunity to, to allow yourself some space. You can always say, I'm gonna need a moment. I need some time. Can I get back to you later? <laughs> um, give yourself the space to, to breathe um, and think. You can do that. Do you want to start paying more attention to your physical body by noticing how it reacts to people, places, and things? That's your senses. So we want to make sure that we are paying attention, like I said, to how we breathe, how we react, how we talk. Because sometimes you could be up here and, you, you know, because you're not really saying something that really means something from here. So <laughs> pay attention to that, you know, for yourself. You don't have to tell anybody. Go write it down somewhere. I don't know. You know, I'm going to start really recognizing if I go into a higher octave <laughs> when I'm talking. And what does that mean? Um, do you feel comfortable in your body? Do you feel healthy? Are you taking care of your physical body? And are you presenting your physical body in the way that you would like to present it? How many days are going by where you're saying, I don't like this about my body. I don't like this about my body. I don't like this about my body. And what are you doing about it? Do you want to change it? Because if you don't, then make a decision that you're going to be okay with how your body is. And maybe you say, I'm going to be okay with my body until March 1st. And then I'm going to make a change. I'm going to start looking into how I make a change. And then you're, you're living your now in a more peaceful, pleasant state of mind that's not grueling on yourself. How do you feel about your outer beauty? Is it something that you'd want to care more about in general? So that's not just about weight that's just maybe about like how you're dressing and how you're feeling about your hair and your skin and your nails and all the beauty parts that come um you know with being a feminine person so if you are and if you're not and you're more of a masculine person then you still would like to probably care about your outer appearance but in different ways maybe not in a beauty way but maybe just in a caring way towards your skin and your hair and your makeup and your nails or no makeup if it's up to you but then it would be more about skin right so how do you care for your outer physical well-being like let's really like pay attention to that spf we have to wear spf outside let's move into food 
food is so important. I mean, I learned about this while I was jumping on 40 foot poles in the air that, you know, having the connection with your body, feeling like it is in, in its most physical best shape for you in your life at this time for what you do in your life your body is going to do what you want it to do so if you sit for long periods of time your body is going to say okay well i'm gonna become the best body that sits well right which is then not great for if you would like to go for a walk you're going to start feeling aches and pains but then you got to teach your body hey body we're going to walk too so let's get used to this and move through that um food how are you eating because that's what's going to affect that physical body um, are you paying attention to what you're eating and how you're eating it like your portions um and how often you're eating um drinking we all love a drink drink and as mums that glass of wine just feels just mandatory, doesn't it? But sometimes we just have to be more mindful about whether we're having more than two glasses, how often are we having those two glasses? Those are also calories and they're also taxing on the body. So let's continue to be aware of that. Um, do you take vitamins, products or anything for your wellness with your healthy eating? Because those are definitely important as well. Um, and I just want you all to know that with all these questions I'm asking, there's no wrong answer because it's the answer that's right for you. And if you have any questions for me based on what I'm saying to you, please reach out to me. Um, my email I can make sure is available to you. And my Instagram is at it's Gwendolyn and I'm always available on there doing all kinds of shenanigans to do with wellness and my kids and, and acting. Um, so we move into intention, moving forward. So what makes you feel ready? What do you need to feel ready to really move forward with all of the work that you've put into yourself? Um, you've got to be able to figure out what is going to inspire you to move through those butterflies, the, the anxious feeling to get what you want on the other side. Because we have to get through the fears, you guys. You, you have to get through the fears. It's just one life, you know? So think about what has stopped you from executing what you really want in your life in the past. And maybe it's a pattern. So let's be aware of that. And what can you do differently this time? How can you make it a different choice with a different outcome? And what do you deserve? What do you feel you deserve? And you know what? I am going to encourage you to write that down. What do you deserve? Because when you write that down, you're accountable to it now. And I actually really encourage you to say it out loud to yourself in the mirror if you want to. I want you to just continue to have your dreams and goals for yourself. I want you to take care of your inner wonder woman so that those Velcro little patches can stay up here so that when you go out into that world and you put your superhero cape on, it all comes together. And this superhero woman is ready for the world. With that, Thank you. I hope that you felt like you expanded your mind, your thoughts, the way that you move and you go out and meet some other Wonder Woman superhero women. And uh, thank you very much for your time.